you have that smile on your face, that smirk that tells me I have no right to meddle in your affairs, that I should stick to my gossip and my domestic concerns. Am I right? Don't go. I have something to say to you. And you must listen to me. You will listen to me. I'm afraid of what will happen if you don't. There is something here, something different that I don't think you understand. This is not one of the drunk madmen you've seen. That crowd, those ignorant, sweating, half-drunk vermin will try to persuade you to hurt him. You mustn't touch him. I'm begging you. Of course they're angry. They hate the very sight of him now. They stuff their dirt-cracked thumbs into their ears every time he opens his mouth. Why? Because they see. They have finally realized he was telling the truth. What is truth? Pilot. He is innocent. That is the truth. That is the God's honest mystery. He's not like those others who scream for peace here and all the while sharpen their swords on God's silence. They slash in alleyways and shadows. God has spoken with his steel teeth. Oh. He whispered peace that wasn't loud enough for them. You can't end it all by his torture. You will mollify them for the moment, but it will come back on our heads. This is... You're involved in something beyond yourself, beyond the law. Don't patronize me. I fought tooth and nail for your position. Don't tell me I don't understand justice. I'm terrified. Not enough to do, to do around this place to keep my soft little brain from jumping to conclusions. Listen to me. I can see when fear bats justice into the corner. I can see when it's better to follow your intuition than your rule book. You will listen to me? God spoke to me, Pilate. He spoke images in my brain. It carries its own weight. I was in the desert. It was familiar to me, a lifeless, pale stretch of fruitless dirt. I was the only living thing in that place. My own voice rung sterile to me as I cried for help. Begin to fan out around 
something. They began to shout, uh, to surge forward to something I couldn't see. They were shouting for help. Thousands of voices begging for life. I started shouting too, but no one paid me any mind. I reached the outer world of people. I plunged in without breaking my stride. I began pushing and pulling and digging my heels ahead, shoving my elbows aside, and then I heard it. Just faintly at first, and then louder and more discordant. was the sound of laughter. Suddenly, I was angry. Who could laugh with so much weeping and begging going on? I looked to see if anyone else had heard what I did. It was in that moment that I saw this bug-eyed, clawing mask for what they really were. Hunchback, limping, clutching, twisted, festering deformities. I began to gag. I wanted to push my way out. I didn't belong with people like this. These people were miscreants, afflicted, suffering from years of unmerciful poverty. What was I doing here? Just then, I felt my feet tingle. So I looked down and I saw water splashing at my toes. It was sluicing in rivulets, twisting through the sand. When I looked around, some people stopped when they saw the water. They let it touch their feet, but moved no further. Some people jerked out of the way as if it might be some corrosive, some malevolent joke of nature. I kept pushing forward. I let the water splash and hang droplets on me. The laughter was louder now, more ecstatic. Suddenly, people near me began to straighten and untwist, stand up full, fingers, arms, legs, faces. All were unfrozen by that water. I could see people bunching up in front of me. I, I knew I was near the front where the laughter left from. I spun sideways and I broke forward. In a matter of moments, I was pitched through the twine of limbs and fell face down in the open. The water spun down my face. I stood up and I wiped my eyes. And there he was. Children at play. Some were terrified, 
desperately trying to fall back into the safety of numbers, sub stood without any expression. Laughter did not convince them. Life out of nothing would not move them. I stood up to tell them it was all right. This is where they belonged. I, I couldn't understand why he didn't just drag them in, make them see what's best, keep them from falling over dead in the wasteland, but he never touched them. His touch held back for those who danced in the center. I saw a large crowd of people being herded back by a man. He held them off, kept their eyes from seeing clearly. His back was bent over, but his arms stretched out front his, uh, of his sides and locked tight around his collection. I ran toward him, I shot my hand, and I grabbed his shoulder. I, I was going to pull him away. I clenched his rein. He spun around with a half smile. The smoke. It was you. Do I have your word? 